Jamie here keeping it coin welcome back to the channel and if you're new welcome I hope to earn your subscription today so in today's video I am fitting the UV so uh, without further ado just a short intro I'm gonna spin you around and uh, show you what I've been doing so that's the UV we're fitting the Evo UV 55 uh, by Evolution Aqua um, I've got all my uh, bits and bobs out because I've been fitting it most of the afternoon uh, got a spare ball valve that I never needed um, so that's a plus oh, might as well take that down there so I don't lose that put that back on but yeah so got my whole saw out got all my saws out got my grinder out got my glue out got my files out got everything out so the pigeons are going crazy yeah, just trim the uh, bottom of this door off so it opens a bit wider. Not a lot wider, but there was only a half a mil to uh, to shave off, really. Well, about half a centimetre, should I say. But yeah, so as you all saw before, uh, this was the pipe that is coming out of the back. And uh, that is now got a ball valve on, all singing, all dancing, all working. Got a bit stiff and still that one. I might have to loosen that one, but it works. So there's that Jubilee clip I just picked up. That's going on there, ready for the flexi hose. And then we now have another one. So as you can see, I've got a lovely hole fitted perfectly out of that one. So I don't need a ball valve on that one because that one is the one coming from the UV which as you can see that's now sticking out the wall that must mean the UV is in Hooray! so yeah so comes up and over there across down there down there and 90s out there so as you can see rather than using uh, one and a half inch unions two inch cockney koi as you saw in a previous video glued straight onto the outside of the uh, UV um, but because obviously I then don't have a union I picked up these ball valves from uh, the discord group got four or five of them for I can't remember what I paid to be honest but I've had them for months and months and months ready for when I do the pipe work um, obviously all the all the rest of the ball valves come from Japan Koi Imports, the two down there, all the big four inch ones and that. But the reason I couldn't fit the UV in the last video, one, because of the weather, but two, it just wasn't over enough. So uh, while I stopped at Kitsu Koi the other week, I uh, picked up two 45s just to swing the UV over a bit because the uh, ball valve, as you can see, is only about inch and a half away from the lid and without them 45s the ball valve just got in the way the, uh, if I didn't have a ball valve there the pipe would have come down no problem but I want the ball valves there so I can isolate the UV and close them off and then uh, I can just un unscrew the top unions there and there lift it off the wall and then I'll be able to change my uh, UV bulb I'm going to do it that way rather than drilling a hole in the side of that I mean just to twist a ball valve change the UV I mean it's a 10 minute job to have the pump off and the filters off for 10 minutes ain't gonna hurt so yeah that is now all the pipe work done other than connecting flexi hose which is over there from these in these outlets down here one to that inlet there and then one for the shower up there and the reason I've got a ball valve on the end of that one and well obviously I needed the ball valves on the UV um, ball valve there to isolate the pump because there's obviously a T there um, going out there so that's why I've got two ball valves on that line so I don't get any backflow um, or anything if I need to take the, uh, the pump off because if I just unscrewed that that T is lower than the level of the pond so the water would come flooding back out that way which is why there's another ball valve down there 
Uh, obviously, I've got all the ball valves, but yeah, anyway, what I was saying, the reason why I've got all the ball valves there, obviously, I can use these two ball valves to restrict the flow going through the UV. Um, and by restricting that flow, obviously, more than more flow will go out the T. But uh, my plan is, although the water will naturally want to flow up and through the UV, I want, to be honest, I want the faster flow through the T. Not ideal, obviously it'd be, the pump will be working a bit harder to do that, but the plan being is, obviously I've got a ball valve now on that one as well, and I want that, the line off the T, to go to the shower. Reason being, if we have an extremely cold winter, um, I mean we haven't had one for quite a while now, an extremely cold winter, but if we do, I want to be able to turn the shower off completely. Um, so obviously I can turn that ball valve off that's out there, unrestrict them, turn the pump right down to whatever I need it to, and then the water can still go through the UV, and that water will be the in-pond return down there. So if I do turn the shower off, I can do it that way. If that doesn't work, on the other hand, then because I'm on flexi hose, my second thought being is uh, if I want to turn the shower off, all I have to do is take the flexi hose off the shower, drop it in the pond. Jobs are good. And, but uh, yeah, it depends obviously how much water I can pump, how much flow I get. Um, that's all trial and error once the uh, once the pond's all up and running. Um, but yeah, and because of the uh, exits are almost, obviously there's a few inches, but almost the same uh, distance. If if it's not working the way I've set it up, all I've got to do is shut the ball valves. And um, I do have a ball valve, I believe. Uh, oh no! <laughs> ah, that's a bugger. Right. Last thing I need to get then, ball valve for that pipeline there. Because, uh, yeah, although I've got one down this end, if I ever need to take this flexi off, <laughs> you know what's going to happen there. I'm going to lose two and a half to three foot of water. Um, ah, what a numpty. Oh well, so another quick trip to uh, Japan Koi Imports, get the ball valve for that. And, uh, yeah. That will be no problem at all. Then I can shut that off um, for a second. And as I said before, if, if it's not working, then all I've got to do is swap the lines over. So the fast flow then will be coming out of that one. And I can then put that to the shower and that will be the slower flow. And that can be the in-pond return, either either or. But uh, yeah, it's I've designed it in such a way that I can tinker with it and change it um, and do what I need to do. Uh, I just need to work out how to connect a little bit of flexi hose to that. If anybody knows of a, a good way to do that, let me know. I might just try and rub a boot if I can. Um, but yeah, I need a flexi hose from there so when I drain that, I can drain that onto the lawn. Um, obviously, I've got my purge line down there if, if or when I need it. Um, but yeah. I think I'm just about there. All I've got to do now, as I say, is get the uh, get the flexi sorted and just pull the rubbish out from behind there, give it a bit of a tidy up, um, and go from there. So, just got to take that back off, put the bulb in, because I haven't done that yet. And just, uh, just finished sorting out the pipework. Japanese garden's looking great, although there is an animal that is starting to annoy me. And I've not found out what it is yet. All my little, uh, these little things, I can't remember what they're called, but some it keeps pulling them up, and I'm guessing that's the birds, because uh, I keep finding this one that's tucked under here, um, out on the lawn, um, and a few others keep moving, but I found that rock in the pond this morning, that white one. Some it has been sitting on my plants they're all flat they weren't flat the other day so something has been sitting on there all the petals have fallen off and obviously I've got quite a few leaves in the pond that needs uh, clean now but it also looks like something may have fallen in the pond 
because all them stones were not like that the other day. So, uh, I don't know what animals we're getting in here, but I mean, we do get hedgehogs in the garden, but I don't know. But yeah, um, anyway, remember I've uh, recently set up my new Daphnia culture for this year. Uh, not that we can see any right this second, but I chucked uh, a net full of Daphnia in there, so I'm hoping they're uh, breeding quite well in there, don't know. But uh, I'll have a scoop round with the net in a couple of days and see what happens. These guys are doing absolutely fantastic eating like anything the new one there he is look absolute little stunner absolute little stunner but yeah they are getting really big really fast so uh thank god my pond is just about finished but the chag in there he's hiding at the minute he i think he's now the biggest considering he was the smallest one out of this out of all the ones in here he was the smallest in november and now he's the biggest, so he's definitely got the jumbo gene. Um, can't see him right now. He's in there somewhere, considering he's the biggest. Where is he? Uh, oh. Can he see him? Let's lift it up for a second. Uh, 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 uh. Let's chuck some food in, he'd see him. There's the big. Uh, Jinnatsuba worried me for a minute couldn't blooming see it but yeah he's, he's in there just chucked in a handful of food and uh, he showed his face don't know if you can quite make him out mm, there <laughs> yeah, he's hiding down the back today there's been a lot of uh, pigeons keep landing on the pond today um, so yeah obviously that, that spooks him a bit but uh, I've had the, the front bit off here, off all day. Mm. There he is, look. There he is. There he is, grown uber fast. In November, he was around six inches. <laughs> he's now almost 40, if not is 40. Yeah, I, would, I would say, it's hard to tell in here, especially with that amount of oxygen pumping. A bit bubbly over there, but yeah, he's certainly one of the bigger ones. Right, let's go look at the other fishies. And, uh, as you all know, these guys aren't as uh, aren't as shy. And if I throw in out for the food in here, they'll be straight up. Three, two, one. Okay. Obviously, I've uh, been away for a few days, so they're not as uh, happy with me standing over them as they was before I left. Because they've missed me for a couple of days, but uh, uh, give them a few treats like this. Won't take them. Uh, won't take them long. Yeah, the uh, big two-step kahaku that I've got in there. Uh, this one. Um, I thought it was developing a little shimmy, but the little shimmy is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so I don't know actually if he's going to turn into a, something else or, or what. Or if not, it'll just be a kahaku of a big, big black shimmy. Right, yeah, look at some of these. That little lemon hawaki there, I've just come up for food. Absolutely stunning. I've got some really nice lemon hawakis in there. Yakumatsuba's uh, coming along nice. And if you can see him there, right, look, there, look, there he is. It's yeah, it's a bit cloudy in there at the minute. I think uh, what I fill this up with is uh, the Coppins EF Pro, the one that uh, they use on carp farms. Not koi farms, carp farms, because uh, it's actually the cheapest uh, Coppins out of all of them and it's still high protein I think I paid 46 99 for a 15 kilo sack which less than 50 quid for 15 kilos you can't complain and it's got all the right stuff in it it just leaves obviously an oil on the surface and uh, 
if you're feeding a lot of it, clouds your water a little bit. But if you're not too fussed about clarity, obviously I won't be feeding it in my main pond, but for grow-ons, cheap, cheerful, I think it's 49% protein. Can't remember. But uh, yeah, this is when I'm normally feeding. This is the mix they've got in here. JKI Color Enhancing Food. Uh, big greeny grey pellets. That's the uh, Hikari that I uh, won from Jill and John. And then there's some also my good old faithful Aqua Sauce uh, with garlic. All seasons with garlic in there. Not too sure what this one's going to be. Um, I thought it was a lemon harawaki, but I is it going? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lemon harawaki, but uh, he's now going a bit more red. He's now going a bit more orange than he is uh, yellow. He certainly doesn't look like a kahaki. Either way, he's got a nice spot in his head. Hmm. So, yeah, you see. We will see. Right, I will snap back to you all in a bizzle. Right then, guys, so that's where I'm up to with the uh, with the plumbing and the UV and everything. Um, just got to nip out and grab a ball valve. If I've got time, I might nip out and get that tomorrow. Um, then I can put the ball valve in connect the flexi hoses from the filter house to the pond and then voila um, just the window left to go um, so yeah looking forward to getting that done you can probably tell I'm absolutely shattered I've got massive bags under my eyes but uh, hey ho what can you do <sighs> so uh, yeah thank you all very very much for watching massive thank you to all my uh, subscribers we're doing uh, fantastic with subscribers at the minute i'm up to 835 i think at the time of recording this so again massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed if you haven't subscribed yet i hope i've earned your subscription today um thanks all for watching give us a like and a thumbs up and we'll catch you all on the next one